I'm Nadia Taylor, Training and Exercise Manager for the Readiness Support Center. And this is Semper Gumby, a podcast about emergency management in the Corps of Engineers. We'll cover topics about disaster response and recovery, FEMA mission assignments, and Corps-specific response authorities under which we operate for things like flood fighting and coastal emergencies. Today we're going to be talking about the FEST-A pilot program. Now FEST-A, that stands for Forward Engineer Support Team Advance, and these teams are part of the FFE, or Field Force Engineering program. We have with us Major Jason Winkleman, Major John Grabowski, and Mark Dumas. Major Winkleman, let's start with you, sir. What do you do for the Corps? I am a FEST-A commander out of the Savannah District. And Major Grabowski, what do you do for the Corps? I am the FEST 565th Fest A commander. And Mark, what do you do for the Corps? I am the military planner at South Atlantic Division. I manage the Field Force Engineering Program within South Atlantic Division. Let's start at the beginning. For folks who have never heard of Field Force Engineering, Mark, what is that program all about? The program, as uh, I look at it for me, is three components for us. We have our contingency real estate folks that we have team members from South Atlantic Division. We also have environmental folks that come from South Atlantic Division and go into a national cadre of folks. And then my primary teams are the Field Force Engineering Team Advance, the 542nd in Savannah, and the 565th in Mobile. Each of those two teams that I just talked about uh, are composed of two military and six civilians, and they have different engineering skill sets on each of these teams. Now, just a quick point of clarification here. Mark talks about his teams within SAD, or the South Atlantic Division, but the broader FFE program is handled nationwide. It's handled out of headquarters uh, in Washington, D.C., And there are members of those other two teams that Mark talks about, the CREST, or Contingency Real Estate Support Team, and also the ENVEST, the Environmental Support Team. Those members are spread nationwide as well. Uh, And we'll actually be talking about those two teams in upcoming podcasts, so check back for those. But for now, back to the FEST day. So, Major Winkleman, can you tell me about the mission of these teams? So the mission of the FEST is to provide responsive technical engineer planning and design for Army units. We typically operate more at the strategic or an operational level, so that's the higher level Army staffs, if you will. And we go to four deployed locations to provide this type of support. So the thing about the Army, our personnel system, we lack technical engineering. Even though I myself have a degree in civil engineering, I do not practice this on a daily basis. I'm more of a general engineer. I grew up doing combat engineering, blowing things up. But the Corps of Engineers has these guys, these experts that do this on a daily basis. And so we pull from these folks to volunteer to be on these small teams to deploy and provide their expertise to the Army in areas that we lack. So when we deploy, we're, we're doing various technical engineering missions. It, it could be designing base camps, uh, doing various engineer assessments, maybe structural or maybe an environmental assessment someplace. And each of the skills uh, that we have on the team of the different engineer disciplines, we, we all kind of work together to solve these very complex and very different problems. Because we're not in the United States. We're in deploy locations. You're in the middle of the desert. My team was on this last deployment was in uh, Kuwait, Iraq, Jordan, Qatar, UAE. So you're operating in different cultures trying to solve these engineer problems that are so different than anything you may have seen before like back in the States. Now Major Grabowski, you're the commander of the 565th. So what is the difference between your team and the other FEST teams? Headquarters USIS has decided that through after action reviews that they had a hole and they're trying to fill that hole with a unit that can rapidly deploy when needed for unplanned events. So what they've decided to try is a pilot program of which the 565th was picked to be first to try it. We're structured just like any other FEST team. What the difference is, is our period of possible deployments is a year instead of the six-month or nine-month normal volunteer opportunity. So it's quite different in the fact that, according to the plan, we have three months to train up as a team and then be ready to go, basically. They're looking at 14 days as a no-notice time frame to be boots on the ground, but we'll see how that changes as it goes on. Now, the difference with the Mobile team is that these team members aren't going back to their daily jobs during this entire pilot year. Is that right, Mark? 
That's correct. That's the beauty uh, I see of this new team. This team doesn't have a specific deployment, but they're going to be prepared to deploy worldwide if a need comes up. But if no need comes on up during this period of time, we're still going to practice and have them support different combat commands throughout the world. And they'll go off and support them doing 30-day exercises, providing that technical engineering support that they have requested. So what are some of the examples of that technical support that you can provide out in the field? Well, they, they vary. So, and, and, and there's a lot of unknown. That's the other thing about the unique thing of our team. When we're assigned somewhere, we don't really know what the mission is going to entail. There's a lot of developing requirements uh, when you're in theater. And so for, for our last deployment, we had some unique ones. We ended up doing a dam assessment mission. So I had some additional USACE volunteers augmented to my team that had dam expertise. And we went up into northern Iraq to the Mosul Dam and did a 48-hour assessment of that, came back, and we're actually advising the three-star general in charge of all operations there in the theater, coming back, advising the U.S. ambassador to Iraq on engineer recommendations, uh, and then even had VTCs with the uh, White House personnel, again, advising them on strategic level policy that they should kind of move forward to engage the Iraqi government and other nations as well on the problems that were associated with this dam. That was our more big level one. But but, but some of the other technical missions we do, we do uh, a new requirement came out with, was uh, inspecting buildings for life health safety requirements. So when we deploy, we tend to occupy existing buildings that are built by locals. Instead of putting up a tent, let's go live in a building. But these aren't built to U.S. standards. So there's hazards associated with that, typically a lot of times in the electrical field. And so we're, we're trying to prevent loss of life from a building. But we had a base camp development, so we were developing bases for camps, so designing miniature cities for up to you know 3,000 people. We did a lot of site plans, building plans. I mean, they always want to improve their infrastructure. So when I, when I tell people, I'm like, we're there to improve the quality of life, more or less, for soldiers, you know, whether it's designing, planning, we're making sure that it's done right so that people aren't getting hurt, but again, to improve their ability to conduct their missions. Well, how do you train for that? I mean, here at the RSC, we have quarterly FEST trainings, but what is the training like to get ready for a deployment? Typically, we focus on individual and collective training. Individual training are the things that you do as a person on the team. I don't focus on that. I expect that you're doing that in your daily job. I, mean, I can't teach you how to do civil engineering or mechanical engineering, so I'm expecting that's what you're doing in your daily job. But I focus, and we focus at the FEST training more on the collective training. So we, when they come to the two-week FEST training here at the RSC, they receive uh, instruction in maybe areas outside of their areas of expertise. So we do a lot of environmental. We go through the whole base camp design class. We're getting class on like contracting and some other areas, again, that you're not familiar with, but that are helpful for when you go for and do your collective training. After you leave the RSC, typically you'll go back to your home station and you'll do what we call home station training. So that's what the 565th is doing right now. They've brought in their members and they're going through an exercise right now just here in Mobile to kind of validate their team skills. So we've given them tasks on doing like route reconnaissance, they're doing designing a base camp, and they're also doing a life health and safety inspection of a building. And this requires each team member to kind of work together. They're learning to work together and be a team right now because we don't really know what the missions are gonna be when they deploy. But if they have the basics of knowing how to work together as a team, and, and as engineers, we always want to solve the problem so that they'll figure it out and they'll kind of make it work, I guess. And Major Grabowski, did you want to add anything to that, sir? Well, we started with uh, sending as many people as we could to the standard FEST training here in Mobile at the uh, RSC. Um, there's a little bit more training to do. We're going to do some AutoCAD training here in Mobile, some specialty training for the environmental person for four days here in Mobile. And then we're, we're planning to go to the CRC in March for a week to do our pre-deployment, last-minute medical, legal, those kinds of things. Then the final two weeks of March, the two members that had not attended the FEST training yet will be able to complete that task right before we go into the deployment window. Okay, well, what's the typical makeup of a team? Is there a typical makeup? The team members, they typically range in age from like mid-20s, maybe up to 60 or so. So you have a wide variety of experience level on the team. But again, a lot of these engineer problems we're facing, me as a civil engineer, like I may not have ever done that in my job before. So what do I do? Well, we leverage USACE, its capabilities. So we call, use the USACE Reachback Operations Center, UROC, 
24-7 hotline that we can send information to. And then those guys will find an expert in USACE that knows the answer and then will help us solve that problem in that forward deployed location. And Major Grabowski, what about your team? In a lot of cases, the teams are fairly local or within the division. In my case, I've gone to the whole, I mean, I started locally and then worked my way out to try and build this team. And it is, uh, it's national. Um, I've got three members from the Seattle district. I've got one member from the San Francisco district. And I have one member from the Jacksonville district, along with the one member from Mobile district proper. Then Sarn Bradley and myself, of course, from here from Mobile. So it's a distributed team, which is fairly different. You mentioned that your team members are kind of disparate. They're from different districts, which is different than most normal FEST teams who are all, you know, within the same district. And Mark and Major Winkleman, they talked a lot about how learning to be a team is a big part of this. How have you had to handle people who just didn't know each other at all coming from different districts and now are part of this cohesive team? Have you, have you done anything for, like, team building, or is that a, is that a concern of yours? Uh, it's always a concern for any team, but uh, more especially of ours, because we're going to be in close quarters and in some areas that may not be as comfortable as they're used to back home, but not horrible. What I did is I, I kind of brought the military model to the core uh, as far as what I understand good hospitality is. So I had everybody over to my house for dinner. Nothing fancy, but uh, my wife did a great job putting some stuff together. And the clue that we were meshing very well and very quickly was that after dessert, nobody left. And I I did that again. Each time the guys are are from out of town or in town and we're uh, together as a team, uh, they come over at least once either to mine or my house or or Sergeant Bradley's and just kind of relax and get to know each other a little bit better. And that, along with their personality types, has allowed us to just very quickly move closer together as a team. And part of that might also be that we just don't have a lot of time to get ready. So it's a credit to their personalities and, and their skills to come together that quick. Now, speaking of not a lot of time to get ready, your upcoming deployment is April, this April, to Honduras. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me anything about that upcoming deployment? All the deployments that I've been asked to do for the pilot team are scheduled for 30 days. That was the the guidance that they wanted to do. Since we are, you know, being funded through headquarters uses, they wanted to make sure that we weren't just sitting around. What better way for us to help out and advertise the fest than to go exercise our skills? So what they wanted to do was create as many 30-day missions as they could, which essentially came to about eight missions is what I laid out on the calendar. One of the missions is 29 days. We just try to squeeze it between Thanksgiving and Christmas. But for the most part, they're 30 days. We go out, we come back. Each COCOM that we're going to, they have to pay for the travel and the overtime, but they don't have to pay for the regular hours. So it's a win-win for them and for us the core because we get to exercise our skills, show what we can do, what we can provide to the commanders on the ground or the civilian agencies. And they get us at a much cheaper rate than if the contracted team through the normal process. I mean, it's about a hundred thousand a month for my team to go someplace just in straight hours, you know, with benefits and everything else. So, you know, that taken off the table, they don't have to add that into their projects. Uh, and some COCOMs aren't getting as much money. So it works out. It's, it's a pretty good situation. Right now, we only know that the first mission is Honduras. Second mission set is to go to PACOM. The third mission set, we think, is going to be a uh, emergency deployment readiness exercise that is still being um, planned. So we don't know what that's going to actually entail other than us getting ready to go. And the fourth mission looks like it'll be to AFRICOM. So that's kind of what we know right now. We just don't know the exact locations, some of those. Now those are scheduled deployments, but Major Winkleman, Mark, can you guys address unscheduled deployments? There's eight active duty FEST across USACE. There's actually four deployment requirements right now for FEST. So there's two that are in the CENTCOM area of responsibility. So that's, there's one in Iraq and one in Kuwait. Then there's one in Afghanistan. And then the fourth one is in Europe uh, with the new Operation Atlantic Resolve that's currently ongoing. Uh, other than that, I mean, there's exercises kind of around the world, and that's kind of what the 565th is kind of going to fill right now or some of these other unique training opportunities or exercises. But they're available now if an actual unscheduled event came on up where there's an actual request for forces from a COCOM that the 565th can go and fill that need very quickly because they have the team. 
They've all been trained. They've all been medically certified. They have their passports, security clearances. They can move a lot quicker than a new team that's just coming off and coming into the available pool and just finish recruiting and having all the people going through these wickets. And some examples of that here recently were uh, the Haiti a few years ago. So the Haiti mission a few years ago with the earthquake, and then just a year and a half ago or so with the Ebola virus in Africa. FES were deployed in support of those two operations. Those are just kind of out of the blue things that, and, and that's the thing about our program is these are overseas contingency operations. Like these are not known requirements. They're always kind of, you know, when a war pops up, we can't really anticipate when the next war is going to be. Right now, the, the four that I mentioned earlier, those are all kind of, I say, steady state, but those are existing known requirements. But we can respond to these, you know, obviously unknown requirements as well. What are some of the activities, though, that you will be doing during these deployments? Can you give me some examples? Standard FEST tasks, basically uh, master camp, master base camp development, unified facilities criteria, which are basically sweat assessments or building assessments or infrastructure assessments, planning and design, basically at the beginning level. So what we call 35% design. 1391, uh, DD 1391, I guess, quality checks or creations, which basically gets the process going for funding to get projects off the ground. Now, what happens at the end of this pilot program, at the end of all of the deployments and the year or 15 months that this is scheduled? What happens to the 565th? The 565th will stay in Mobile. It's not going anywhere. However, the all the engineers will return to their previous positions. And the reason for that is it's a pilot. They're testing it out. They haven't committed that, you know, okay, these funds will be committed year after year after year. So everybody will go back to their own district and or job and uh, continue with their professional development and their careers. The normal cycles will continue. However, we are going to be fully integrated into the engineering department here in Mobile. So they are planning uh, a whole bunch of space moves. And we are integrated into that plan. So we will have, the FEST will have its own space within the engineering department so that as the team uh, assembles for the next mission, whether that's a pilot program or whether that's one of the uh, volunteer opportunities that comes up uh, as the standard FEST goes, it, it will be part of engineering. It will be part of the, hopefully it will have a few more members from Mobile um, and if not from the, di- from the division. How do you recruit volunteers for this program? The FES, the volunteer teams, we're always looking for interested individuals that want to be a part of this team. We want folks that are looking for a challenge, that want to represent USACE in these four deployed locations to do something challenging, something different, that want an adventure. But we're looking for folks that want this challenge to go to these locations and then solve like these technical problems. We need folks in civil engineering, electrical, mechanical engineering, environmental structural engineering, and then like geospatial or topography. So those are the six positions that we're looking for. Uh, you know, there's eight of us fest across the U.S., all different locations. So every district or every division is looking for folks to be on these teams. Anything you want to add, Major Grabowski? I would say uh, look into it. I mean, it's a great opportunity. The training facility is right here in Mobile, so the costs are very low for you to be trained. It's a two-week commitment for the basic fest training. Obviously, you have to possess some of the qualities that we're looking for, which is, you know, willingness of the unknown is some of the things that I've run into that stopped a lot of people. Uh, Everybody wanted to know exactly where we were going, when we were going. We try to plan as much as we possibly can, but sometimes uh, we're told we just need to assemble a team and be ready, and we think we're going here. And the Army changes the deal sometimes. You have to be comfortable with that. You have to be comfortable with flexibility. You have to be, you know, stable at home. I mean, obviously, I'm going to give my team off if something happens at home and I have alternates laid in to reduce that risk. We're very cognizant of, you know, life goes on even while you're part of the FEST team. But uh, it's a commitment. You know, you have to commit to the team, commit to yourself, to the training. You're going to pick up a lot of more soft skills. You'll get to lead small projects. So there's a lot of opportunity for advancement or skill building, I should say, within the team that can then apply to your future career. Now, I was asked, is this going to prepare me to be a tech lead? Probably not, because it's more of a the front end of the design. However, you're going to get some of the excitement of some of the travel. You're going to get to see different cultures. You're going to get to see different sites, be part of a small, tight team that hopefully has great chemistry and great culture, which I, I believe we're on the right track for. And it's an exciting thing to do, but you have to be able to let go of some of the normal things that you're used to. Well, sir, Major Grabowski, good luck with your upcoming deployments. And gentlemen, it was so nice to talk to you today. 
We'd like to thank Major Jason Winkleman, Major John Grabowski, and Mark Dumas for being here today. So thanks so much, guys. We really appreciate it. That's all we have for today's episode. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you've learned something. Please subscribe to our feed and check back for future episodes. I'm Nadia Taylor, and this is Semper Gumby.